So Yizka, I, I mentioned how immersed you are in the Piers Esner Rebbe's writings. He has another book uh, called Eish Kodesh, where he talks a lot about um, kind of a spiritual way of dealing with suffering in a very real way. The reason why it's so real is because he himself is going through such immense suffering in the Holocaust while he's writing and speaking about these ideas. So I want to ask you a little bit about um, why is it, in your opinion, um, so much more powerful when you talk to somebody or get advice from somebody who's been through suffering? Um, what, where does that come from? Because I know you know people will come to you and speak to you and, and, and ask you for advice. I don't think it's just your wisdom that people are moved by, even though you are a very intelligent um, and wise human being. But I do think there is something about your, we trust you. You've been through hell and back, and there's a type of uh, sincerity and um, kind of like you earned your truth. So I want to ask you a little bit about why is it that we're attracted to hearing people talk about um, you know, give us advice when they've gone through such intense suffering? Why is that truth more powerful for us? Hmm. It's a beautiful, beautiful, deep question. And I do agree with you. And I think I sense there's a few variables that are operating together. One is... I don't think people connect naturally as easily intellectually as they do emotionally. The opening of the heart, which when one is sharing one's own stories and one's own history, it opens the heart. As I open my heart, as you open your heart, it has an effect on opening up someone else's heart. Or actually, you don't open the heart. They open their own heart, but, the, but a person feels more at ease or more safe or more comfortable. With the intellect, and all the text I teach is also intellectual. However, if it just stays, as I use that expression, above the neck, I don't believe, I haven't seen, it doesn't mean it can never happen, I'm not convinced, though, I haven't been convinced that it's at least as natural and as organic to create a connection. I don't believe the mind connects with the mind as naturally as the heart connects with the heart. That's one part. I think there's another second part here that's very important. The degree to which one is sharing one's experiences with someone else lends itself to non-judgmentalism. The mind, by definition, when we ate from the Eitzadat Tovara, it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil, uh, it's referred to in spiritual texts as the Eitzashiput, the tree of judgment. But what we're referring to here is the Eitzachayim, which is the Eitzachavaya, the tree of experience. When we eat and share from the tree of experience, it's not that it's not good or not that it's not bad. It's out of the misgaret. It's a different context. It's within a different construct. So therefore, it helps a person feel more at ease and more comfortable because there's a lack of judgment. So the person can feel safe, being more vulnerable, being more honest, because they won't be uh, an attack. <laughs> they won't be pushed against the wall, so to speak, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And I also feel there's a third. There's a third variable. How can I put this? That, you know, there are certain parts of a life experience where I could write about it for pages and pages and pages. And someone can read it and identify with pieces of it. But when they hear me speaking it, 
and then they're speaking parts of their journey back to me. There really is a, a Kesher. I mentioned it in the first variable, but this is something else what I'm saying here. I begin to actually see me in the other person, and the other person begins to see them in me. It is so deep and it's so miraculous. It really is radically amazing, as Rav Heschel said. This is radical amazement. It's not only that you and I meet, but we actually begin to see each other in each other through the spoken word, through the body language, through the inflection of the voice. The written word is very important. And there's beyond that.